Let me break it down for y'all. My expenses on my music, it's my mortgage, I guess, is what you could say. Right? But, okay, cool. <laughs> Touring expenses, and I make millions. I make millions off of owning my music and putting it out and not leaving my house. Right? Touring. You know how much money I spent on touring 2019? My tour expenses for 2019 were $2.1 million. I spent $2.1 million. I spent that on touring, getting around the production, the staging, the staff. 2.1 just to take home 20 to 30% profit margins. Are you kidding? I, you fuck your voice up because you're singing every fucking night. We all go see that doctor in LA who fucking... Y'all think the COVID test is bad? I finally actually like... Because I was... I'm squeamish. So I didn't want to like watch the videos of the COVID test. Because everyone was like, they're so bad. I finally watched one. That's what y'all complaining about? They stick that thing up there for like half a fucking second. Bro, the fucking vocal cord check. They stick it up your nose till it comes out of your throat. And then you have to sing notes. Up your nose till it comes out of your throat. And then now sing... Uh, ee, ee. Y'all complain about a fucking COVID test. I saw that shit the other day. I'm like, wait, what? This what y'all like, what? Okay. God. Anyway, touring fucks your voice up. It's expensive as shit. And you don't even take home that much fucking money. Because the industry has tricked you into fucking thinking that there is no money in music. Because that's what they want you to think. They want The labels, all, all these people, they want you to think that Go tour. That's where you make your money at. That's a fucking lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. I've toured every year of my life since being on, and I've never made more money touring than I did selling music. Ever. 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 It, because it, it's not even possible. The expenses are too high on the touring side. You have to spend so much money. On that fucking I See You Part 2 tour... Just on the part two tour, not even the part one, the part two tour. It was like nine shows, ten shows. I spent a million dollars on production alone, a million. A million. Out of my pocket. That's not even the bus. That's not even the hotels. You know what I'm saying? You know how much money I spend to put out a fucking song? Nine dollars. I spent $10 on Ain't Nobody Taking My Baby and $10 on Psycho Part 2. That's $20 total. I shot the videos for free in a hotel room. They've both made $1.2, $1.5 million. I put in $20 and got back about $2.5 million. You compare that to putting in $2 million on touring and getting back 3 or whatever the fuck it could be. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. This whole industry is fucking backwards. And this outdated ass fucking narrative of you like, forget about selling you, just tour. Like, that's where you're going to make your money. Just tour. Nah, then you get these artists who get burnt out. They go on the road. They pick up a fucking drug habit. They get into some shit. They fuck with bitches they shouldn't. Now, granted, these are all personal decisions. But at the same time, it's not the greatest environment. You know what I'm saying? But it's fucked for your voice. You know what I mean? Like, your your John Mayer's had this vocal surgery. I think Adele had some shit. SZA had some shit. You know what I mean? I had to fucking chill out from over usage. It's just like, man, busting my fucking ass, spending all this fucking money just to see 20 to 30% on the back end. And that's a good profit margin. Compared to, gee, I don't know. I'll sit in my house and put up a song for ten dollars and make 1.5 you tell me i hope y'all taking advantage of this shit like when i was starting off there was nobody giving gems nobody was talking i got a lot of content russ consistently gives us content we got a whole russ playlist it's like 20 something videos on youtube go to the youtube channel if you're not on there already at dorian group 82 on youtube click playlist and see the russ playlist go lock in and watch these clips man he's by far giving the most jewels about the music business. Y'all can't say y'all didn't know because the shit's right there. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from group82music.com and right here we got Russ talking about how he spent $10 and made 1.5 million, 
right? So for those of y'all that don't understand, even though he said it in layman's terms, it costs $10 to upload a song to Distro Kid. You need a Distro Kid link, click the link in the bio. I'm an affiliate. I get money when you click it and you upload your songs. Go do it right now. Make me some money. You spend $10 on Distro Kid, you upload your song, and then the shit sells because you know how to market and you make millions of dollars. Now, I put that as a title because it's true. But what I really want y'all to pay attention to in this clip is about touring. Because when I first started off in this music shit, everybody kept saying the same thing. You make your money from touring. You make your money from merch. Touring, merch, touring, merch, touring, merch. That's what everybody kept saying. So I was like, okay, I need to set myself up where I'm selling merch, which I did on my website, doriangroup82.com, group82music.com. We got merch for sale. I need to set up a tour. And so I started really studying touring. And when you start looking at how it is to tour, to tour, you got to go to multiple cities. So let's say you do like a five city tour. That ain't shit. At the time, I was in Indianapolis. So let's say I do Indianapolis, I do Chicago, I do Dayton, Ohio, I do Columbus, I do Louisville, Kentucky, right? That's a pretty small regional tour. You got to have equipment when you tour. Because these places might not have the equipment that you need. So you need to rent or buy equipment you can't tour on your own you got to have somebody with you that's going to help set the shit up and at least control the deck while you're performing even if somebody's not a dj like if you go watch old j cole clips on his first tour his manager eve was the one controlling the music and shit eve's not a musical nigga like that but they it was just them too you have to have merch if you're taking it with you got to take boxes of merch you got to get a van. Somebody got to drive that shit. If you the artist and the CEO, you don't feel like driving all over the place. You got to get gas. Got to have insurance for that. You got to get hotels. You got to have food. So even a five-stop tour, and let's say you're doing 20 people per stop, right? Indianapolis, Chicago, Dayton, Columbus, Louisville. I mean, you're still going to come out of three, dollars $4,000. And you're not going to make that back. And that's like bare minimum. And that's if you do a tour with 20 people per stop. It wasn't making any sense financially. So I kept thinking like, yo, why the fuck does everybody keep saying you got a tour? Like, what is this shit? What am I missing? I mean, I'm really studying the game. And what I realized is when you're a signed artist, that is where you make the most money because you don't own shit. You don't own your masters. You don't own your publishing. You ain't getting no royalties because you signed a record deal and you took an advance. So the only way that you know that you're going to be able to A, pay the label back quickly and B, get a lot of money is on the road. That is why that narrative gets pushed out there. This is why I keep telling y'all to stop listening to these sensationalized PR stories from these artists and really look at who's making money and who's not. When you own your music, you make fucking money. Universal, Sony, Warner, they want your masters for a reason because it makes a lot of money. They're not just doing it for the hell of it. When you own the music, it makes a lot of money. But when you don't own the music, you got to find other ways to bring in money or you're going to be SOL. Those y'all don't know what SOL means, shit out of luck. That's how it is. It's how the music business is. Sorry. It's how the music industry is not the music business. When you're in the music business, you own your masters. You get royalty checks every month. You get publishing checks every quarter. These are things that I get. So I don't really have to worry about touring. If I ever decide to tour, when I do tour, I probably will tour, it's going to be optional. It's going to be tied into other things that we're doing. It ain't going to be, I got a tour so my daughter can eat. It's not how it works. This narrative that they've been pushing to you is a crock of shit. And when you study the game and you own the game, you understand that. Too many of y'all are listening to these signed artists that don't have nothing because you want clout. You want to be in the music industry. Like I keep saying it, you want to be in the music industry, get your advance, you ain't worried about ownership, then by all means don't listen to shit I'm saying and go and do that. But if you are an independent artist who wants to own and maintain and create generational wealth, forever money, Stop listening to these idiots. Listen to the people that's actually doing it. Russ is someone who's a touring artist. He has sold out to Staples Center. This is a massive venue, 20,000 people. And he is still saying he makes more money selling music at home. None of this shit's free. So you gotta mitigate your expenses as much as you possibly can. And you gotta maximize your profits. And it's way easier to make music at home, distribute it out, and talk about on social media and to get people to stream and buy and follow you and all that shit 
and make money daily off of that than it is to go on a tour that at any given moment, another pandemic can shut down. Which do you want to be? Do you want to be at the liberty of some outside influence? Or do you want to be somebody who's making money every single day without even thinking about it? I made my decision early on. I wanted to be the latter. And I'm living proof of it today. If you're somebody that's interested in doing the exact same thing, you on Instagram, click the link up top. You on YouTube, click the link in the box. Mouth to pot. Y'all stay true. Don't you dare come away because I need you. Don't you dare come away because I need you. Yo te quiero bonita. Baby girl, you a fine mamacita. Don't you dare go away. Group82music.com.